I would say that arrays are one of the most useful programming tools available. Every programming language that I'm familiar with, at least, has some form of an array. If you're trying to learn a new programming language, one of the things I would recommend is to get familiar with how to write and manipulate data in arrays. Like, if I was going to learn a spoken language like Russian, I'd want to prioritize learning the most common words and phrases first. Well, if I am learning a new programming language, I am going to spend a ton of time learning how to use arrays in that language because they're just so fundamental. In this video, you're gonna learn how to go through, that is how to iterate through an array in the Arduino programming language. If you can do it in the Arduino language, then you can also do it in the C and the C++ language. Knowing how to do this opens up a ton of useful possibilities for you as a programmer, and I'd argue it's really an essential thing to learn about any programming language that you're interested in using. Stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. All right, before I jump in, I just want to say a huge shout out to Altium for sponsoring this video. If you check out the description, you can get our link to a free trial of their software. All right, so here we are in the Arduino IDE, and I'm going to write a little bit of code, and then we're going to talk about it. Basically, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to make an array. And I'm going to say like, you know what, this array is going to be filled with sensor readings from some sensor. Like maybe, maybe my device is getting a packet of information from some other device, right? And I have no control over that other device. I'm just getting a series of inputs from some other device. And so I'm going to make an array that kind of like mocks out that input. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through each one of those inputs. And then we'll print it out to the serial monitor. So let's do that. All right, so what have I got here? Well, the first thing I did is I created an array. And this is just like a mock-up array. It could be, you know, whatever. But this is an array that holds floating point values. The name is called sensor readings. And the size is four. That means it can hold a total of four values. It can never hold more than four. Like the limit, the size of this array is established when you first create it. So the size is four. And then I initialize it with four separate values. Now you don't have to put in the values when you initialize it, but in this case I have. So I've got four fo floating point numbers that I initialized it with. Now for this discussion, what's important for us is we understand like what the index of these numbers are. So let me just write that out above this so we can get clear. So the index value refers to the position of the element in the array. Now, if you're wondering like, hey, what is this index thing? I don't even know how to make arrays. We just released a video not too long ago about this exact type of thing called Arduino arrays. You can check that out to kind of learn what some of this stuff is. It seems a little foreign. Okay, so now we know what the index value is. There's zero, one, two, and three. Now let's kind of move on to the rest of the program here. So we've got setup, setup only runs once. I'm using the serial begin function. I set that at 9600, that's the baud rate. And this is going to establish serial communication between the Arduino and our computer. And then we've got void loop. The loop function in Arduino runs over and over and over again. That's kind of where you put your main code. And inside the loop, we have a, another loop. It's called a for loop. All right, for loops are an extremely common programming structure. You're gonna find them in every language that I'm familiar with. And we're gonna use a for loop here to iterate through our array. But before we jump into this for loop, let's just say I wanted to print out every single one of these values to the serial monitor window. Like what would I have to do if I didn't use a for loop? What would that look like? Well, let's just code that up real quick. Do you need a printed circuit board design software to move your prototype to the next level? Altium Designer is a great choice for designing PCBs, sharing your design with team members, 
and even getting your design manufactured. What really kind of blows me away about this software is that even though it's a super powerful tool, at the same time, it's really intuitive to use. They've got helpful video tutorials built right into the software so you can kickstart your learning process and actually get something made. Right now, you can get a free trial to Altium Designer with our link in the description. That's right, you can test drive this super powerful software with a free trial. Just check out the link in the description. So what I'm doing inside the loop here is I'm using the print line function. This is gonna print a value out to the serial monitor window and I'm calling the array that we made, sensor readings. So here's sensor readings and I'm passing the index corresponding to the value that I wanna get. So the first item in array in the, in array is indexed at zero. That's called zero indexing. You might think like, well, hey, if it's the first item, shouldn't it be one? Well, it's not one, it's zero. All right, so I pass in the value zero and that should print off the number 1.23. Then next I have to use another print line, serial readings, and I type in the number one. This is, again, the index number. This should give me the second element in this array. So it should print off 3.44 and so forth and so on. So the last element in this array is indexed by three. All right. And then I just have a little delay in here to kind of slow it down. I'm going to go ahead and open up the serial monitor window and let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. So you can see, you know, we start, here's a print right here and we're printing off those four values. And since we're in the loop, you know, it's gonna happen over and over and over again. But this whole hard coding thing is what kind of we wanna get rid of. We don't wanna to have to mess with this. And that's why we are gonna use a for loop. Okay, so the for loop is gonna basically do that same thing. It's gonna index every single one of these numbers, and then it's gonna print off those items. A for loop has three things inside of these parentheses. The first thing is called the initialization section. The second one is the condition. And then the third one is the increment. So here we initialize a variable that we're going to use inside the for loop. This part only happens once, right? So this is really weird inside here. And it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around. It seems so straightforward if you've worked with for loops for a long time. But the idea is it gives you a place to say, hey, which variable are we going to use inside of this for loop? And what we're doing is initializing a variable called i, and we set it equal to zero. We say, hey, this is an integer. The name of the integer is i, and we set it equal to zero. So we have a variable, it's called i, and it's set equal to zero. So that gives us this value i. The letter i, there's nothing special with the letter i. This could be a k, this could be count, this could be whatever you want to call it, vodka, it doesn't matter. i is just a very common name. It's terse. And that's almost what I, you know, I always use, but not a requirement by any stretch. All right, so I is this value that we're going to use to kind of run this for loop. The next thing here in the for loop is called the condition. The condition determines how many times the for loop is going to execute. So our condition here is saying I less than four. All right, so if we said I is equal to zero, right? So if I is zero, zero less than four, that statement evaluates to true. So as long as this statement evaluates to true, the for loop is going to continue to run. So in order for us to stop this for loop, we need a way to change i, right? Well, how do we do that? Well, that's the last part of the for loop. This is called the increment. And what we're doing here is we are adding one to i. This i plus plus is basically saying i plus one. So we could say i is equal to i plus one kind of uh same thing here right but a short way of saying that is just saying i plus plus super handy used all the time and it's good and a very common thing to do is just add one in the increment but you don't just have to add one maybe we want to subtract one like say there's a situation where we wanted to subtract one or maybe we want to multiply it times two you know you can do whatever you want to i you can do whatever you want in that increment but a very common thing is to add one, which is in fact why they came up with this, you know, plus plus operator. So I know that's probably really, if this is the first time you've seen that, you might be like, I am really confused. I don't get this. Okay, so this is how it's gonna work. When, let's say, let's pretend we're the computer. 
All right, we start this for loop, we're coming down, we're like, oh, hey, look, here's a for loop. The first thing I do, and I only do it once, is I say, oh, all right, what, what's this first thing here? All right, i is equal to zero. Okay, so i is equal to zero. The next thing we do is we check the condition. So we ask, all right, is i less than four? Well, what's i? Well, hey, we just set it to zero, right? So is zero less than four? Yep, that's true. So if this condition is true, we are going to execute the code in here. All right, so right now, what do we do when we're inside our for loop? Well, the first thing is a serial dot print line. So we're gonna print something off. What do we print off? Well, we print off our array, right? Sensor readings is what we're printing. But what index value are we passing? Well, we're passing a variable, i. Hey, wait, we just saw i. What is i set at? Hmm, well, remember, we set it equal to zero. It started at zero, so i is zero. So what should print off now? Well, we should see the zeroth element in our array, you know, the first element, which is 1.23. So this should serially print 1.23 to the serial monitor window, because i is zero. And then, you know, I threw a little delay in here of a second, just so we could kind of see that happening. And now we get to the end of the for loop. Again, remember, we're the computer, we're pretending... Some of us are pretending we're the computer. Maybe you are a cyborg or whatever. So you get to the end, and now what's the next thing we do? Well, that's where this increment thing comes in. Now this is going to add 1 to i. So we're going to take i. i was 0. What's 0 plus 1? Oh, hey, that's 1. All right, so now we do our increment, and the next thing we do is we check the condition. So now is i less than 4? Well, what's i? i was 1. Is 1 less than 4? Last time I checked, that's true, right? So this condition's true. We're gonna run back in to our for loop. So what's the first thing we do? Oh man, this is, you know, we do a serial print again. What do we print? Sensor readings. Oh, but wait, we're passing I again? But what is I now? Last time it was zero, but now after we added one, I is one. So now we're gonna print sensor readings of one. So now we're gonna print Whatever value is at index one, what is that? Well, that's 3.44. So we're gonna print that out. Now we come down here, we delay a second, we come back up, hey, we're gonna iterate over i. So i was one, we add one to one, that gives us two. We check the condition, yep, two is less than four. We come in here, all right, I think you get the idea, right? But what happens when we get to the, the place where i is three? All right, so let's say i is three right now. Is three less than four? Yep, it is. We print out sensor readings of three. That would be 111. We delay. Now we add one to three, and it's what? What is it? It's four. Now we check our condition. Is four less than four? No way, Jose. So that means this condition is false, which means this for loop, we are done with it. Adios, senoro. So we get, we escape this for loop, we're done with the for loop, we do like other code down here, right? And then in this case, since all we have is the for loop, we get down to the bottom and we start the for loop over and we do this whole thing over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload this code. I'm gonna open up the serial monitor and then we're just gonna kind of take a look at this so you can see it and you know I'm not like totally making this stuff up, which is tempting sometimes. All right, so you can see we're just printing these values over and over and over again. And that's basically how you can get through each item in an array. Now, in this case, I mean, you know, this is kind of contrived, but what we're doing here is a really common thing. Let's say we wanted to do something more uh, useful. Well, what's, you know, when I look at this data and I, I see like, okay, 1.23, 344, 5.6, wait, 111, doesn't that seem odd? Maybe I know, you know, as a programmer in a, the specific domain I'm working with, that sometimes the sensor readings I get don't make any sense, right? And maybe I have no control over the values that come into my program because maybe I'm like pulling them off the internet. But I do know that, hey, if a value is too big, it's like junk data. So maybe what I could do is I could check to see in my for loop if the value is greater than something and then set it equal to something else. So let me do that, kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about.
All right, so you see I added a little bit of code in here. What did I do? So we've got the same for loop here, right? It starts up here, it ends down here. I've just got a bunch of serial prints in here and kind of some stuff I'm doing to, to demonstrate. But basically what we do is the first thing we do is we print off the sensor reading like we were before, but then we check each sensor reading. We say, hey, if the sensor reading at that index is greater than 10, we just want to set it equal to the maximum, which is 10. Maybe we want to set it equal to zero. Maybe we want to set it equal to like negative one so that we know like it's a, a bad piece of data, or maybe we just want to set it equal to zero, whatever we want to set it to, you know, we could do that here, right? But we only do it if the value exceeds a certain number. And then I just do a print, you know, to say, hey, we changed it to this. And then uh, just some more print formatting, and then I delay a second. So let's go ahead and upload this, open up the serial monitor. All right, so let, yeah, we'll just talk through this real quick, right? So it prints off the first one, right? One, two, three, four, that's fine. It's not greater than 10, then the second, then the third, but it gets to 111, right? So I would have been three, is 111 greater than 10? It sure is. And so now we set sensor readings at index three. So this value right here, we set it equal to 10. And then you'll notice that doesn't happen anymore because we've, we've changed this, right? So now that it is equal to 10, this if statement isn't going to execute again. So maybe you have a function that filters out specific values from an array when you get new inputs or something like that. I think you get the idea. Basically, you can do anything you want to the values in these arrays when you can iterate through it. And you can do it conditionally based on some feature of an element in that array. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks a ton for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I cannot stress enough how important understanding arrays are. If you're going to learn a programming language, learn to use their arrays. Super helpful. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you want to learn more about all this Arduino programming stuff, make sure to check out our training program at programmingelectronics.com. Also, thanks so much to Altium for sponsoring this video. If you want to get a free trial of an amazing PCB design software, check out the description. Use our link. You can get a free trial of Altium Designer. Also, before you go, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to get more videos like this. Leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts about this video. And as always, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.